Hey everybody, doing a little bit of stuff to the 68 Camaro. I know I have quite a few people that are super excited about all this, but I got the good news. We got the sniper in, the distributor nozzle over there too. So what I'm doing is setting this thing up, trying to figure out, I'm doing layout first before I screw everything in. I'm trying to make sure everything fits under the hood and aesthetically looks nice. I don't want any of this stuff to look out of place. I'm still trying to figure out how I can get a nice set of short valve covers that are polished or I'd really honestly would rather have chrome or uh, Endura Shine would probably be the perfect thing because I want this the engine to be the jewel of the car. So I'm laying this all out. This is probably going to have to be moved up here. I think it's going to give me enough space to put the distributor down in there and then tighten everything up. I'm really weird. I don't like wiring to look like shit. It drives me nuts. So I'm trying to route everything so it makes a ton of sense. So I got that stuff here and then in here. You probably notice there's a Camaro missing. It is at paint, so hopefully that'll be back in a couple months, two, three months. So what we have here is the HyperSpark distributor, which has a cast iron gear on it, so it should be okay. It's a ass temper cam core. It's a Elgin cam core in the thing, so it should be okay. And kind of what I've been doing under here, please excuse mess. I think I have another the other side. So I don't know if any of y'all know this, but putting three inch exhaust underneath the 68 Camaro is not an easy task. So I had to take, these are, I don't even know if Jags or Summit offers anymore. It was their like house brand exhaust kit. And what I did is had to cut, chop. This is another piece that I had because it was too long. A lot of people just don't realize. Let me show you what the actual problem is. That's how much space you got finger fits in finger fits in and when it actually took the muffler up it actually comes up just a hair bit more the way i got it set up muffler will go up about another pump and what that does is it tilts it and then tilts this back here just a hair bit but then, honestly it's probably better to be closer to that because this shouldn't move this will move with those on there and then we got the full length uh, traction bars underneath the car and the one inch drop blocks and that ET cover that's been jet hot coated and that sucker looks clean it looks good so we got all that stuff just trying to piece this thing all together we still have the gas tank I forgot somehow I did not order the anti squeak straps so I got them ordered they should be here I have to figure out where I put Somewhere, somewhere, there's the new straps that came with it. And I think they're in the trunk. I hope they're in the trunk. Because if they're not in the trunk, it's going to be a problem. I'll just have to go get those powder coated. Knocked all out. So, good news is, we got a lot to do. So, hopefully, my goal is in the next two to three weeks, I actually be able to start it. I probably kind of still want to take the torque storm off, send it off to them, have them check it. I just don't want to do it twice. The other thing I'm kind of worried a little bit about is that 90 degree bend. I don't think anywhere near in the world that's going to fit underneath the hood. So it looks like the other ones they have has a straight clock, the actual compressor housing, straight, put it up. It looks like that'll help. And then there's a very slight chance to fit that under the cowl. I've seen a few of these where they modify where this comes down. It just got, it's got to fit closer, tighter, no matter what, to fit real nice. Car is super dirty. I should got leaves all over it. But we're getting stuff done. So things I still gotta do. I gotta wire up the one wire alternator. Um, put once again put distributor in it. Gotta find a good set of plug wires. I also did a little bit of research. It seems like on from the from what everybody says, PCV just run it just like normal because it's not always gonna be under boost. But it has a check valve that only allows air to suck in so that's the only direction it's allowed to go a little arrow on it i still got to get some block offs there's no real vacuum on the car and i still gonna need to get the, the hoses and stuff i gotta pull these out i want to put the 90 since the short water pump back on it 
And I need to get one more for down here for the heater. Because I know it sounds crazy. I mean, who's going to drive a freaking what, six, 700 horsepower freaking big block in the cold? I would. So I got all that stuff together. Now the other good thing is with all this stuff, without the car in here, everything's kind of cleaned up a bit. All the disc brake stuff, once again, is here. As soon as I get the exhaust in and the gas tank, that will be the next thing is to switch it out. But hopefully tomorrow my game plan is I'm probably going to tape up where I have did all the welding and just do some spray touch up with it. I might paint the whole thing. Just tape the bottom of the car up and spray it silver. But I got to weld the mufflers and I got to weld the front. The thing I'm wor more worried on this side is I might have to trim here considerably so I can bring the pipe over. And once again, these are eBay stainless steel headers. I bought these forever ago. These are the more expensive ones, though. They got some kind of tag on them. You can see it down there. They do fit really well. This is, once again, a big block Chevy in the small block Chevy mount location. So you'll notice, and like all the other cars, that motor is right dead smack in the center. All the other stuff will be off about an inch and a half more to your right. That way if you had, if you had power steering, you could actually fit it. And keep in mind, there's a gap in there. There's more than what you can see. It's probably about 3 sixteenths. It might be a quarter. But that'll be more than enough. It's got the... Uh, urethane mounts front and rear so it should be fun so stay tuned hopefully i'll do another update in another probably two or three days and i'll show you kind of what we're doing on that other stuff going on this car here i'm thinking i'm going to put the i got a set of amd front fenders for it i'm going to check them see how they fit because basically what way it's going to probably work out is that car the 68 the one that's going red it'll come back and then hopefully at the same time this car here will go out to be glacier blue only thing really left to do on this body is take the inner fenders out and inner fenders i want to sandblast them and put them in epoxy and then like i said we'll check the fender fitment because this is the one that's going back glacier blue i got a 427 sitting over there to throw in it I got some good stuff. This thing should be pretty wild and fun at the same time. It ain't going to be super crazy. I got over here, there's the 204R that's been rebuilt for it. I need to get a converter for that. And then I got the tool bolt sitting in the shop. So it will be the correct, at least date right, 427 for a Copo car. It will be a 204R, and I'm going to keep it on the column there. And then I'm going to have... The rear end will be, I'm probably going to keep this thing 331, somewhere like that. Man, no more than probably 342s. That way I can go out and have fun with it. And, but at the same time, I get good gas mileage. Or decent for what a big block can do. Also, been doing a lot of cleaning. So you'll see the shop. It's crazy. But you can walk around, which you could not do much before. So... Once again, get all this stuff buttoned up. Start this car. I want to hear it. I want to see what this thing runs like. And then we'll try to finish up a few other ones too. I have not forgot about the Bel Air either. Um, got to go get all the rear and stuff. I have all the spoon. Yes, I got some really, really nice silverware to put underneath the rear end of the car. Spoon, by the way, or I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It just seems cooler to say it's spoon. Uh, they got tubular upper and lower control arms for 65, 66, 70 full size cars, and I got all tubular stuff to throw under it. So you're gonna see a lot more. So stay tuned.